we are going to study about cultural methods okay so cultural method is nothing but is the method on how to culture on culture media so let us discuss firstly we have to discuss about equipment equipments needed in cultural method okay so there is uh, our in this one is the inoculation loop this one is our inoculation wire this is our burner this is our red hot sterilization method red hot sterilization you see red hot sterilization of inoculation wire is that so these are some equipments and method we used in cultural method so let us dive into the cultural methods there are two uh, cultural methods aerobic and anaerobic cultural methods okay so first let us discuss about anaerobic aero cultural methods the first one is our streak method in anaerobic cultural method first let us discuss about our streak method okay so what happens in streak method is that let me draw this one is a petri dish this one is the nutrient agar this one is a test tube containing culture sample okay this one is a inoculation wire or inoculation loop we can use anything okay this one is the inoculation loop this is this handle okay so what we do is here that first we dip the inoculation wire into the cultural sample so we will get a sample at the uh, inoculation wire and what we do we make a primary inoculum here so you see we make a primary inoculation here and after that after that what we do with the inoculation wire we streak out we streak out many lines here parallel lines okay this is the primary streak and after primary streak what we do is that at here we do first sterilization what we do here is that after primary streak we uh, we shows this inoculation wire into the burner till red hot so by red hot sterilization we sterilize the inoculation wire here so you see it will be the bacterial free inoculation wire then the next time we using it okay after primary streak what we do is that we make a secondary streak by the tail from the tail of the primary streak we do a secondary streak sorry we do a secondary streak okay at the end of secondary streak again we do second sterilization and after sterilizing the loop again we streak it down from this end this is a tertiary streak so you see what happened here is that by the time of tertiary streak we will get a isolated colonies okay by the end of tertiary streak we will get a isolated colony and again we sterilize here then you see we can get a isolated colonies by the end so let us deeply discuss you see this is the primary streak then this is the secondary streak and this is the tertiary streak by the time of the tertiary streak on the tail end we will get a isolated colonies you see this all 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 isolated colonies so by the tertiary streak we will get a isolated colonies this is how we do streak method then let us dive into the next cultural method that is the lawn culture method lawn or carpet because we entirely on the uh, uh, petri dish we entirely culture it so that's why called lawn or carpet cultural method so what we do here is that we can either do this by two method one is the flooding method or we can also do it by swabbing method what we do here is that uh, we take a cultural media which consists of agar and nutrient so after uh, taking cultural media we pour the cultural sample into the petri dish and after flooding it this is the first method after flooding it the rest can be poured so we will pour back so we will get a thin layer of cultural sample in the cultural media that is the flooding technique and then there is the swabbing method in swabbing method nothing we take a swab and swab it the cultural sample into the cultural media okay entirely so we will get a carpet or a lawn like culture method cultural media so that is the lawn or carpet cultural method so lawn on carpet carpet cultural method is used in antimicrobial susceptibility testing AST 
and also used in vaccine production okay so you see antimicrobial susceptibility testing is nothing but what we do is that we will uh, put a anti bacterial disc here antibiotic disc at the uh, many places so we will get a zone of inhibition this area this radius is called a zone of inhibition you see here we have a bigger zone of inhibition that means here the cultural sample is more uh, susceptible to the antibiotics than here so based on the radius of zone of inhibition we can identify whether it is uh, more or less intensified susceptible towards the antibiotics okay so that is the that is how we will do anti microbial susceptibility test we will detail this study in later okay so the next method is our stroke method third method is stroke method in stroke method what we do is that at the end of inoculation wire we take out the culture sample and in the cultural media in a test tube we stroke it out like this you see here this is there is a stroke here you see this is the stroke we put make it down as a stroke then uh, this sample can be form colonies as a stroke like structure so that is called the stroke method so stroke method is used in many biochemical reaction test okay like citrate utilization test that is whether it uses citrate or not based on that we will get a different color so citrate utilization test it can be used in citrate utilization test urease test we will study about all this okay citrate utilization test and urease test stroke method can utilize in citrate utilization and urease test then the fourth aerobic culture method is our stab method stab culture so what we do in stab culture is that in stab culture we stab the inoculation wire into the cultural media so there will be growing of that organism along this line okay that is the stab culture stab culture method is used in triple sugar iron test okay triple sugar iron agar test TSI means triple triple sugar iron agar dust then it can be also utilized in manitol motility dust manitol motility test is used for motility detection okay so what we do here is that in manitol culture we stab the sample culture uh, with the inoculation wire into the manitol medium that is the man how that is how we do manitol motility test then our fifth aerobic culture method is liquid culture so what we do in liquid culture is nothing but we culture organism in a liquid culture media okay so in liquid culture media we will get a three layers maybe three layers maybe two layers maybe only one layer that is turbidity okay maybe no layer means there will be no organism so you see there can be three layers maximum three layers will be formed if it was an aerobic bacteria if it was an aerobic bacteria we will get a surface pellicle you see there is a surface pellicle here there will be a surface pellicle if it we get uh, if it was we are culturing an aerobic bacteria we will get a surface pellicle if we cultivate any bacteria we will get a turbidity layer this turbidity layer can be either granular or also can be uniform okay turbidity can be granular layer or a uniform layer this turbidity layer is uniform that is under there is a uniform turbidity so the the turbidity layer can be granular layer or a uniform layer then we will get a sediment also in a liquid culture media so these are the three layers in a liquid culture media if it was an aerobic bacteria we will get a surface pellicle if it is not an aerobic bacteria then we will only get a two layer that is turbidity and sediment layer these are the 
liquid cultural methods now the sixth method is pour plate method so sixth and seventh we study together okay then there is seventh method that is spread plate method So you see both why we studied this together because this both are almost same procedure also this is used in counting viable count so viable count is necessary in order to study a bacterial growth curve okay so in order to detect the viable count we use pore plate method and spread plate method so what is the real difference between pore plate method and spread plate method is here that firstly let us discuss how the procedure is done so common procedure okay so both has a some common procedure the first one is that we take an original sample you see this one is the original sample and from original sample we take out about 1 ml into the next test tube and add about 9 ml of a solvent into it so that made 10 raised to minus 1 dilution okay so from this sample we again take 1 ml into this to the next test tube and about 9 ml of solvent into it so we made a 10 raised to minus 2 dilution okay so this is repeated about four times in this picture we can uh, repeat it countless times okay but we have to know how much time we repeated it that means we have to know the dilution factor so in this picture we have diluted it about four times okay so at the last four we will get a 10 raised to minus four dilution so this is a common method common this is a common procedure in both the two methods then what is the difference between pore plate method and spread plate method is that from any of this test tube, if it was taking the third test tube, the third dilution, the third time diluted test tube, see if you can, we can take a sample from this or can be taken from a sample this from or this or from can also take sample from this. Okay, no problem. But we have to know the dilution factor. That's all. So take out a sample about one ml. Take out a sample about one ml from any of the test tube and mix it with warm agar okay so we have to take in pore plate method we have to take one ml sample and mix it with warm agar nutrient warm nutrient agar then we have to pour then we have to pour into a petri dish so we will be getting a mixture of colonies and agars okay that's how the pore plate method is done. But in spread plate method, from any one of the sample, we take 1 ml sample. And what we do is that spread down already set agar. These are the real difference between pore plate method and the spread plate method. Both are, both are used in viable count. So now we prepare the method then how to calculate the viable count. So calculation of the viable count is done by viable count is number of colony per plate into dilution dilution factor. So this is how we test, demonstrate viable count number of colony per plate into dilution factor for example in this plate we take from the fourth test tube that is the four time diluted test tube okay and then there is one two three four five five colonies are there and into we have to multiply it with the dilution factor so we will get a number of viable counts okay so that's how the spread plate and pore plate methods are done so these are the seven methods of Aerobic culture methods. First one is the street method. Then there is lawn or carpet method used in uh, antimicrobial susceptibility test. Then there is stroke method mainly used in many biochemical reactions. Then there is tab culture used in manitol motility and uh, triple sugar iron test. Then there is liquid culture. Then there is our pore plate and spread plate method used to detect viable count. Okay, so let us dive nextly into anaerobic culture methods. So in anaerobic culture method, we have to introduce an anaerobic conditions there. So how to appreciate, so how to get an anaerobic condition, that's how we have to deal here, okay. So first method to produce an anaerobic environment is by producing vacuum. Producing, but it has no many advantages and it is not usually done. So first one method is a producing vacuum, our then next method is 
sorry so the next method is the evacuation and and replacement of oxygen So what we here do is that we have to evacuate the oxygen here and also we have to replace the oxygen. Usually the replacement of oxygen is done by inert, inert gas like hydrogen. Okay. We have to replace the oxygen by inert gas by hydrogen. So evacuation and replacement of oxygen in this method we there are usually we do by two instruments. Okay. So the first instrument is our famous McClendosh and Fields anaerobic jar. McClendosh and Fields anaerobic jar. So you see, this is the McClendosh and Fields anaerobic jar. This one here. This one is the McClendosh and Fields anaerobic jar. There will be a pressure gauge. And there will be an inlet and outlet in order to uh, produce, in order to move the inert gas inside it, okay, and outside through it. And there will be a metal lid and a metal jar. And inside this metal jar, there will be a catalyst, okay. Inside there will be a catalyst, aluminium catalyst, aluminium pellet coated with the palladium, okay. There will be a catalyst that is aluminium pellet coated with palladium okay so what this pellet do is that it removes the oxygen inside this jar okay so how it is remove oxygen in presence of hydrogen in presence of this catalyst will cause us h2o so it will make an anaerobic condition inside this jar that's what the McClendosh and fields anaerobic jar will do there will be a catalyst of aluminium pellets coated with palladium the next one of the by the next one instrument that work on the principle by evacuation replacement of oxygen is anoxomet so you see this is the anoxomet so anoxomet is automated we, we here what we have to do is that here we have to introduce hydrogen in order to uh, replace the oxygen we have to introduce hydrogen manually so you see there is an inlet and outlet okay so we have to replace uh, hydrogen uh, with oxygen manually here but in automated that means anoxomat there will be entirely automatic procedures so we have we not have to do anything entirely the instrument itself will do so anoxomat is automated automate oxygen remover and replace with with hydrogen okay here also the same catalyst is there that is aluminium pellets coated with palladium so these are the two instruments comes under the principle of evacuation and replacement of oxygen in order to produce anaerobic condition then our third third method in order to produce anaerobic condition is none other than absorption of oxygen by chemical method Okay, absorption of oxygen by chemical method. So there is an instrument, there is a chemical substance that is called the gas pack method. Gas pack system. So you see, this is the gas pack system. There will be a jar like a McClendosh and field anaerobic condition like jar. There will be same catalyst palladium catalyst. There will be a palladium catalyst pellet. And here, what the additional there will be an envelope. Okay, this is one is the envelope containing sodium bicarbonate. There will be an envelope containing sodium bicarbonate and sodium borohydrate. If you are not seeing that, I will write it down here. Packets with sodium bicarbonate. And this sodium borohydride. Okay, so what these do is that 
sodium bicarbonate and so these packets sodium bicarbonate and sodium borohydrate will do what is that in presence of water in presence of water it removes oxygen in presence of water it removes oxygen or carbon dioxide plus hydrogen you see this is how it replace oxygen and maize and anaerobic condition inside the jar and if any rust of the oxygen is there then this catalyst will also remove the oxygen okay so it will make a anaerobic condition inside this jar that is by one of the method of absorption of oxygen by chemical method that is gas pack system then there is our anaerobic glove box fourth method is anaerobic glove box you usually know there is a vacuum inside this box okay and to do the methods we use gloves okay we actually see this is in movies like in astronauts movies in space in spaceship we can see this like things okay then there is by reducing agent by reducing agent we can remove the oxygen inside the culture media okay for example our famous robert robertson cooked meat broth so you see in robertson cooked meat broth there will be meat particles okay there will be meat particles meat meat pellets will be there inside the robertson cooked meat broth okay meat broth bottle there will be meat particles meat pellets so these meat pellets act as a reducing agent and removes the oxygen and there are many also other reducing agents like uh, glucose okay glucose ascorbic acid etc so these are the example by which how we make an anaerobic condition in order to culture anaerobic bacteria first one is by producing vacuum second by by uh, evacuation and replacement of oxygen mainly by inert gas under that there is macondo and fields anaerobic jar and anoxomat then we can also remove make anaerobic condition by absorption of oxygen by chemical methods okay so chemical method is the gas pack system here gas pack system consists of sodium bicarbonate and sodium boro borohydrate what we do is that this sodium bicarbonate and sodium borohydrate removes the oxygen in the presence of water by converting it into carbon dioxide and hydrogen okay so it make a in you know, anaerobic conditions there also the palladium pellets will also remove the oxygen from inside the jar then there is anaerobic glove method and by reducing agents our famous robertson cooked meat broth in example for anaerobic culture method anaerobic culture media's example okay so these are all the cultural methods so now let us discuss about culture identification uh, what are the biochemical reactions we do in a bi cultural media okay next we discuss about it so